Good evening. I uh, hope everyone had a good weekend. And uh, tonight we're back on the assembler. The last couple of videos I've been doing some bare metal programming on the Raspberry Pi Pico. But, uh, but tonight I'm bringing out the heavy artillery. Tonight I am bringing out the Raspberry Pi Zero Two with its quad-core Cortex-A53 processor, the uh, RP3A0, uh, running at about, I think, a gigahertz with a half a giga RAM. So yeah, uh, it's a it's a pretty um pretty serious chip. And tonight I will be showing you how to blink an LED via the GPIO. And uh, at the end of the video, I'll also show you how to do some inputs with the GPIO, since I think those are pretty cool. So uh, yeah, as always, uh, gotta have the documentation at hand. The uh, RP three eight zero is based on the Broadcom two eight three seven which is also the same chip that's in the Raspberry Pi 3. So this code should work exactly fine on the Raspberry Pi 3. I think maybe even the 4. Um, you can let me know in the comments if that's true. But um, as far as this documentation, this is for the Broadcom 2835. And let me just say, Broadcom documentation is horrible. Like... This is like, it's just full of errors and typos. It's, it's not very easy to find. Like, there's like, to find like a good Broadcom doc, you have to like really dig through the forums and go through all these links. And it's just like, most Broadcom documentation is just ugly and full of errors. Like, I, I don't know how big, bro, uh, how big of a company Broadcom is, but like, Honestly, they could have done better. Like, my mom can write better documentation than this. But anyway, um, let's start digging through this. Um, first thing you'll have to note is the uh, memory map. So there are three different types of addresses in this documentation. You have the virtual addresses, which is used for um, operating systems. You have the physical addresses, which are the ones we're going to be using since we're... Uh, we're writing this bare metal, like no operating system. And then there's the uh, bus slash peripheral address, which is what all the peripherals are listed under in this documentation. Why they're listed as peripheral addresses and not as physical addresses, I don't know. But um, note that right here, it kind of gives you a definition on how to translate a bus address into a physical address. So instead of 7E, you'd write Two zero, but because this is for the Broadcom two eight three five, this is bad information. Uh, as far as I could find from the internet, you'll be wa wanting to write to the uh, the physical addresses start at three F for the Raspberry Pi zero two, and same for the Pi three. So uh, when you see seven E, just think three F. But uh, yeah, the first thing we we'll want to do. Um, if we go to the table of contents, we'll need the general purpose I.O., which is page uh, 89. All right, here we go. So here we have the uh, all the GPIO registers. So the f um, very similar to how the Pico handles things, you can assign different functions to each GPIO pin. So... Here we have a function select register. Uh, there's, yeah, six total. Um, and this is how you assign a function, whether it be an input, an output, or an alternative function to a pin. And then you have your uh, output registers, which is how you set the pin. You have your uh, clear registers, which is how you clear the pin. And then you have your uh, level registers, which is how you read from the pin. So first, let's get this base address into code. On the, uh, the first Pico video, someone made a comment about how the text was too small. So um, I bumped it up a notch. Uh, let me know in the comments if this is, uh, this is good. But uh, first thing we'll want to do is load the GPIO base address in. So four bytes. Let's go 0x. 3F, and what was that? Um, so, yeah, 20,000. 
and then let's load that into R0. So then to set the register as an output, um, if we go to the function select register, uh, let's see, pin, we need function select 21. So we're going to be writing to pin 21, and yeah, here it is. So to set it as an output, um, pin 21 is bits 3 to 5, and we need to give it a 1. So 1 sets that pin to an output, but we need to shift that over 3 bits because function select is bit starts at bit 3. So instead of a 1, we're going to be loading an 8 into this register. So move an 8 into R1, and then we'll store R1 into R0, and the offset is, what is it, uh, 8. So function select 2 is 8 off from the base address, and that should enable our pin as an output. Now to actually set the pin, we'll need to, um, how f the output set works is that each pin is a, uh, here we go, each pin is a bit in the output register. So if we want to set the 21st pin, we need to set the 21st bit. So let's move a 1 into R1, and then let's shift that over 21 times, and that should give us our output value. And then to set the output, we'll just, uh, we need a comma here, We'll just store R1 into R0, and then the offset of the output register is, uh, where is it, output set 0, and 1C, which is, let's see, 16 plus 12, okay, 28, so we're going 28 uh, from the base address, and that should set the output. Uh, let's jump to the good part. Let's uh, let's let's put this in a loop. Just kind of like we did with the Pico. Um, we'll need a delay function. So let's say we have some value in register two that we'll subtract one from, and then let's see. We need this isn't thumb modes. So we actually have to. Uh, say that we're using the status register and then we'll branch if equal back to the delay uh, symbol and then when that's finished let's branch back to link so then back up here um, let's just use whatever in R1 as our counter so let's move R1 to R2 and then we'll branch to the delay function now to clear the output, uh, very similar process, but uh, the clear is, okay, this is confusing. So the in hex, it's 28, but it's a different, so this 28 is in decimal. So 28 hex translates to, let's see, 2, 16, 30, okay, 40. So we are loading this at an offset of 40 and that should clear the pin and then lastly we branch back to the beginning so this will be an infinite loop of turn on the LED uh, delay turn off delay and then repeat the cycle alright everything is assembled and I have my Pi set up uh, here I have a circuit um, just right here is a ground this is pin 21 right here. So pin 21 is connected to the LED. Uh, this is just in here to uh, hold the uh, board down. And uh, all you'll need uh, is this, plus you'll want to have a um, little SD card. Yeah, it was a mini SD, micro SD, whatever. And then you'll want an adapter. Uh, so you can plug it into a computer and just for comparison um, here is the Pico next to the Pi Zero um, you, 
considerably larger chip uh, pretty uh, pretty hefty chip so here I already have my SD card set up so you'll want to make sure you have three files so you need bootcode.bin which is your initial bootloader uh, start.elf which I think is the either like the second stage bootloader or like the bootloader for the GPU um, you I'm not sure exactly what these two files do uh, I, th I think it would be like a fun video to kind of like take those apart uh, kind of dig dig into what these guys are doing but um as for your binary you want to call it kernel 7.image so just drag your binary into your SD card and also you want to make sure the SD card is formatted in FAT32 all right, quick error. This should be a branch if not equal, um, because we want to bring this register down to zero. All right, I got the new image on the SD card. So now when we plug this in, it should blink. And there we go. We have a blinking LED. All right, I just wired up uh, two more LEDs hooked up to pin 20 and pin 19. So if we go back to our documentation, uh, function select. So pin 19 is in function select. Uh, yeah, here we go. Function select one. So let's move. Um, we'll probably need to shift this over. What is it? We're setting the 27th bit. So left shift L, R1, R1, and we're going 27. And then we're storing that function select is one is at offset four. And 20, um, let's see, yeah, 20 is pretty easy, 20 is just bit one so we just got to set this to a nine so um i'm gonna make this a bit easier let's just say we have pin 19 which if i pull up my calculator 119 that is this number in hex We need another zero. And then pin 20 is just the next one over. So carry that and then that's a one. And then pin 21 is again double that. So here we go. We have our uh, three values so let's load them into the registers we'll load 19 into register 1 let's load 20 into register 2 let's go uh, 21 into register 3 So this is going to have to be 4. Since we're using register 2 and register 3 for the pins. So let's set 19, 20, and 21 in order. And then let's clear them. So in a loop, it will set them in order and then clear them in order. All right, the uh, new image is on the SD card. So now if we throw this on, we got our three LEDs. And then if we plug this in, So the resistors, this happens a lot.
All right, had some uh, wiring problems, but um, yeah, here we go. Uh, this is the blink sequence. Uh, it is very difficult having to use resistors in this format, kind of like using it as both a resistor and a connector. All right, now for the uh, input side of things. Inputs are actually pretty easy. So all pins are input by default. Uh, as you can see in function select, uh, zero is just an input. So to read pins, you just read from this uh, GP uh, pin level register, which is just like setting an output. Uh, each pin is, uh, I mean, each bit is its own pin. So if we want to read from pin 20, we just read whatever is in bit 20. So let's go back here and um, let's get rid of, uh, yeah, let's get rid of this. Um, actually, let's just load 21 into register 1. And um, I'm not going to use pin 19. So we can just remove a lot of this stuff. So as far as reading, uh, we're not going to store into the register. Instead, what we're going to do is let's first clear the um, register. Let's clear pin 21. And then we'll load into R3, uh, R0 with an offset. What is so level? 34, 16, 48, 52. So we're loading 52 uh, offset from the base, and that should be our uh, pin 20. Um, well, that should be our pin level register. So then let's ands R3 and R2. So if the bit in uh, so if the 20th bit is set, then we should not return 0. So if it does return 0, let's just branch if equal back to the loop. And then if it continues, we'll turn on the pin. And then we'll have to have a delay. So that has to be a 1. All right, another quick error since I am dumb as shit. This has to be an 8 because... Um, I just ran it and I realized that it was set as an output. So make sure that is set as an input. So here is the circuit. We have an LED on pin 21 and then a switch on pin 20, which is connected to the voltage. And I have the new uh, kernel 7 image on the SD card. So now if we plug this in. All right. Um, yeah, make sure that resistor is uh, making contact. So if I turn the switch off, it turns off. And if I turn the switch on and it makes contact, yeah, so, yeah. All right, here we go. That should be making good contact. And then off, on, off, on. Yeah. So that is, uh, yeah, that's how you use inputs with the GPIO. So yeah, overall, um, I'd say other than the fact that you have like a uh, 56 kilobyte bootloader, um, this was easier than the Pico. So yeah, that's how uh, that's some bare metal assembly programming on the uh, RP380, the Raspberry Pi Zero Two. You can use this as your main machine, you know, like throw on some Linux, uh, throw some Linux on the SD card, plug in your monitor with this uh, mini HDMI, plug in your keyboard, 
and uh, you have your uh, a, f a full personal computer. Or you can uh, just keep writing some uh, good old bare metal code. 